All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about GoPro accessories. Toward the end, I have one that you probably already threw away. Plus I have two that I recommend you don't even purchase in the first place. Let's get into it. All right, so I wanna first start off by saying this isn't gonna cover items like the waterproof casing or the screen protector, the lens protector, those are things that I assume people are gonna purchase anyways. These are items that are kinda of beyond that that have their own special little purpose that I think is worth purchasing and adding to your kit. So uh, I wanna start off first with the magnetic clip. But first, we gotta get some pals. So before I purchased the magnetic clip that's actually made by GoPro, I had purchased this little clip from Same Top, and it's honestly done me really well. One thing that I really like using this for, it's really tough to turn, but if you spin it like this, and you take the shutter on an airplane window, you can put this guy right on that airplane window, put your GoPro right here, and you get some really cool time lapses when you're taking off and when you're landing. So why did I buy this if I've already got that clip? Honestly, it all came down to the magnet, I'm kind of a sucker for GoPro official accessories as well, so they kind of got me there. But I love the fact that you have the standard GoPro clip there. Clip your GoPro in, and now anywhere you have a magnetic surface, you can just grab that clip and slap it on. It's awesome. So for example, in that opening scene, I had my GoPro mounted on the magnetic clip, and I had that sitting up top here. So just like that, I can grab it, and I can move it. And anywhere that I have metal, it sticks, so it's physics. So on top of the magnet, you got the clip. The clip's cool because obviously you can put this thing just about anywhere. Put on your backpack strap, put it on the bill of your hat, put it on your belt, you could roll down your window, put it on your window. Honestly, anywhere that's got a semi-flat surface, this thing holds on to really strong. And for 24 bucks, honestly, I think this thing's a no-brainer. All right, so next up, we got the chesty. The chesty only makes sense because most people who are buying a GoPro, they're buying it to go take action shots. So this is perfect for keeping your hands free, keeps that camera nice and mounted to your body. It's close, so if you need to make any adjustments or review your footage to make sure you got the shot, it's right there. Plus, it's close to your mouth, and so all those GoPro vocal commands works really well here. This one comes in at 39 bucks. The chesty is super easy to take on and off because of this built-in buckle. And once you have this thing on, it's actually really comfortable. Here's a quick clip to show you just me wandering around outside, but it gives you a better idea as to what this thing looks like while it's actually being worn out and about. Up next is the three-way selfie stick. This thing is great for if you're trying to get those shots that are looking back at you. Maybe if you're vlogging, something like that, or if you're trying to spin around in your office and capture that. It also breaks down to turn into a basic handle grip as well. It makes it very portable and easy to travel with. And it's also got a built-in tripod. So if you're trying to do time lapses, things like that, you can set this up, works out really well. This one comes in at 63 bucks. Similar to the three-way, we got the shorty stick. The shorty stick is gonna be a bit more lightweight. It's not quite as expensive. It's even more packable. It also turns into a tripod. And this one comes in at 39 bucks. So it's a little bit more budget friendly. So next we got a couple mounting accessories. So we're gonna start with the Jaws Flex Clamp along with the Gooseneck accessory. Lock these two together and you can place this just about anywhere. Think of somewhere like a skateboard or a picnic table. It's gonna position your camera nice and sturdy to wherever you're wanting to film. This one comes in at 49 bucks. And then we got the suction cup mount. This one's been around for a while, so I'm sure you've all seen it. I personally have never used this thing other than on my car. For some reason, that's the perfect time to use this. I had positioned it on the side of the car so you could see the wheels but this is gonna be a perfect option, again, for just setting it on something that's gonna be a smooth surface. This one comes in at 40 bucks. 
All right, this next one's probably my personal favorite GoPro accessory. It should be noted that I don't come from the video side of things. Other than maybe two family videos, this is actually the first video I've made. I come from the photography side of things. So there's a lot of time when I'm out and about taking pictures and I want to be able to take a video of myself taking a picture to kind of capture that moment. So this right here, this is the hot shoe adapter. This thing's awesome. Put your GoPro on here, you mount that right on top of your camera and then you can capture video of whatever it is you're taking pictures of. I personally have one that sticks out of mind and I was uh, down in Texas and we were at the MotoGP race and I was back in the paddock and again I had my camera on top of my camera and I was trying to get pictures of Valentino Rossi and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get through the crowd to get that picture that I wanted but I was able to get a video of the whole experience and for me that it's just a great memory that I've got and I captured it all because of this $10 accessory. So, it's, it's definitely something that for 10 bucks you just gotta have. Alright, so sticking with mounting accessories, up next we got the handlebar seat post pole mount. This one, honestly, the reason why I got it was I had seen somewhere else where somebody had a, a video of their steering wheel. GoPro was mounted to it. So as they're turning the wheel, you get this rad shot of the GoPro kind of flipping around the wheel. So that's why I picked this up. Uh, what I did is I took this rubber accessory out and it fit really nice on my wheel. Tighten that down on there. There's a tab here that when you press down on that you can rotate to get whatever angle that you want. And then when you're ready, you just close it and it locks down. You could put this on anything that's fairly small, that's round, maybe up to about an inch and a half in diameter. Uh, but they do sell another version of this which I can't remember exactly what they call it, the large pole mount adapter, something like that. It's a little bit more expensive, but from what I understand, it's up to like a two and a half inch radius. So know that they have that one available as well. Uh, but this one here comes in at 30 bucks. And I mean, you be creative. You could mount this a lot of different places. So up next, we got the GoPro smart remote. With the smart remote, you can connect up to 50 GoPro devices up to 600 feet away. So press one button. All of your devices will start recording. Again, press one button and all of your devices will stop recording. You also can go in, you can press and hold the power button. That will shut down your devices all at once. So this comes in at 80 bucks. So if you only have one GoPro and you still want to remotely connect to that GoPro, if you're fairly close to it with your smartphone, you can actually start recording stop recording, you can do all those things with your smartphone as well. So keep that in mind if you're trying to be more budget friendly. And I hate that I have to add this next one, the mic adapter. Honestly, if you want to make your GoPro sound any better than it is stock, you have to use an external microphone. And in order to make that happen, you have to have this adapter. This comes in at 50 bucks. So now that you have your mic adapter, this is the microphone that I recommend. This is the Rode Video Micro. This comes in at $60, so it's actually relatively inexpensive. It's lightweight. Rode has a really good reputation for having great products. Plus it's not battery operated, so it's one less thing that you have to forget to bring. That being said, now you have your GoPro, you got your adapter, and you got your microphone. So now what? Obviously you can see this is just a, a hot mess. So that brings me to my next accessory, the vlog cases from Ulanzi. Nobody's really done a better job at creating cases that conceal the mic adapter than Ulanzi. This is the version for the Hero 7 Black, and this is the version for the Hero 8 Black. I'm gonna focus on this one for now, just because it's the most current one, and it's the one that I've been using more often. There's a bunch of small little features that they've added to this case. So this particular one, the new one's made out of aluminum, so it's really stout and sturdy. They have this top cold shoe mount that you can pop off, makes it smaller. The nice thing about this is that when you put it here, when your microphone is up top, it elevates your mic more, so that way you don't see it in your shot. They have two cold shoe adapters, so that way you can have your microphone and a light. You also have a neutral density filter 
mount right here. I personally went with the Gobe just because it had good reviews and it was relatively inexpensive. Put that guy on there. Now you have your variable neutral density filter. Also on the bottom, you have the GoPro mount. You can take that off if you take out these little screws and then it has a quarter mount as well. So you can hook it up to a traditional tripod. You can hook it up to any of the GoPro accessories. So they've really thought a lot of things through with this new case. They have a protective door over here. You do have to take the door off of your GoPro in order to put it in this case. The one downside is that once you take your door off, remember your GoPro is no longer waterproof. So keep that in mind when you put this case on. You put all those accessories together and you got yourself a nice little tidy vlogging rig. I didn't mention this GOBE neutral density filter. This comes in at 35 bucks. All right, up next, let's talk a couple power related options. We'll start with the dual port charger from GoPro. In specific, the standard version and not the 360 Max version. The standard version comes in at $47, whereas the 360 Max version comes in at $70. The 360 version only does the Max 360 batteries. This version does both batteries. So for less money, you can do more. That's a better value. You're going to want to have this thing in your bag. You're going to be on a trip. Your GoPro is going to die. Slap your batteries in here. You can either plug it into a power bank or leave it at the hotel and plug it in. Come back to it, you got fresh batteries. All the while you're off adventuring with your GoPro. So definitely something that you should have in your bag. And when you're looking for power on the go, I really recommend the Anchor Power Core. These things are awesome. I've never had an issue with any of these. They've always been reliable. They have a whole bunch of different sizes from 10,000 milliamp hour, 20,000 milliamp, 26,000 milliamp hour. This one in particular has power output, so you can charge, I'm charging my EOS R camera, you can charge your MacBook laptops. So honestly, this one right here is really one that fits the bill for almost everything. The downside is, is it's really heavy. At 26,000 milliamp hour, this is actually still legal to bring on an airplane. If you're trying to go a little bit more lightweight, the 20 and the 10,000 milliamp hour are both awesome. If you're just out and about for the day, the 10,000 milliamp hour will charge your GoPro quite a few times. You want a little bit more power, then step it up and go with the 20. And again, if you want to be able to charge your DSLR mirrorless, if you want to charge your laptop, then the 26,000 is definitely the way to go. The 26 comes in at $140, the 20 comes in around $40, and the 10 comes in around $25. So again, depending upon how much weight you want to pack and how much power you want to have on demand, that's going to define your choice as to which one you go with. But I do have one other option that is fairly lightweight that kind of has limitless power. So that's going to be the Goal Zero Nomad 7 Plus solar panel. This thing is awesome. It's Lightweight, has that magnetic clasp so it closes really nice and tight. It's got a little pouch on the back so you can put all your cords in here. They also have a little power bank that you can buy and that fits nice in here as well. A little snug, but it fits. I love how they have these little cutouts here because I like to put a carabiner on there and I'll hang this up in a tree where I have really nice good direct sunlight. Charge your GoPro, charge your phone. This thing, honestly, it's really lightweight. It's nice to have in your bag. I don't bring it on every trip, but if I know that I'm going to be somewhere remote where I might run out of power in my power banks, then this is definitely something that I'm going to bring with me. So just a quick demonstration. We got the Goal Zero charger, the Nomad 7 Plus. You can see we're getting a charge here on the GoPro. We're out here in Washington where things are nice and cloudy. We even got a little bit of raindrops going today. You can see those on the charger. So a quick shift in direction. I do want to touch on a few things for the, the Max 360. One item that I really like is going to be the Fusion case. This case was originally put out with the Fusion GoPro camera. That thing I returned pretty quick. It was kind of a debacle. I really like the Max 360. And the one thing I did not like was that it came with this little pouch. And it's got a little spot up here for the little bubble covers, the protective covers that come with it. But once you put the camera in here and things are kind of tight, honestly, I only used this about once or twice and I was like ready to get rid of it. So I jumped online, went right back to the Fusion case. It fits really awesome in here for the Max 360. It stays open on the bottom so you can have your selfie stick connected. 
throw the case on, protect your camera, pull it off really quick and easy, and you're back at the action. So honestly, this little fusion case, if you have a Max 360, please, 20 bucks, go buy one right now. So while on topic with the Max 360, I had purchased the GoPro branded Max 360 selfie stick, and it's really thick on the bottom. So when you have it extended and you get your video, when you look, your hand is chopped off really bad. So that one came in at $60, and honestly, it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, so I returned it really quick, and I purchased the Insta360 selfie stick. This thing comes in at $16, so it's way less expensive. The GoPro version is plastic, and this is metal. This actually extends quite a bit further as well, so you can't really see in here. Not the best example, but this thing is so much better. The only downside is, is it has a quarter mount, and as you know, the GoPro has this GoPro mount. So I also had to purchase for $10 this little aluminum conversion from quarter to GoPro. But this is so much thinner, and I rebranded it GoPro to kind of fit in with my accessories. Uh, but this here has been so much better at getting really nice clean shots. It's not perfect, I'll be honest. You have to get the camera perfectly straight. If you're new to 360 cameras, you have to have the camera perfectly straight, so that way it can erase the selfie stick. And this one is no different. Uh, one of the videos that I used in this clip, if you look close, my hand's actually cut off because I didn't pay enough attention to whether I had it straight or not. So that's my bad. But So this selfie stick for $16, in my opinion, if you have a Max 360, this is definitely the combination to go with. So what about that item I mentioned that you probably already threw away? That little plastic base that the GoPro is mounted to inside the package. I use these things all the time. I've drilled holes in some of them and I've mounted them on the wall. So that way when I'm filming different areas inside the office, I can mount my GoPro to the wall. You can mount your GoPro to this and set it on the ground and it offers a really nice base. So something that's free that already came with the camera you actually can get quite a bit of use out of it. So all I'm saying is don't throw it away. So you got your new camera, you got all your new accessories, you gotta put them somewhere, right? That's where the Hex Ranger Mini Sling comes in. This honestly has been my favorite bag that I've found for a lightweight packing solution. If I'm not trying to bring my full bore photography bag, this thing fits a lot of stuff in it. So here's a quick example of what you can fit inside the bag. I got my selfie stick from Insta360. I got my 20,000 milliamp hour from Anchor. Over here in the hidden pouch, got an extra memory card. I also have my magnetic clip right here. Got a couple cables for GoPro and iPhone. A couple spare batteries. Got a mounting clip. Got my microphone and cable. Got my Max 360. And I got my vlogging rig with the shorty stick, the Elanzi case, the mic adapter. Give you an idea how much space you still have left in this bag. So you might notice that I don't have the media mod, the display mod, or the light mod on this list. I personally opted to go with the Max 360 for any type of situation that I would even be using those accessories. So I can't speak to them myself, so I left them off this list. All right, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you know the drill. Leave them down below. I also listed links down below for all of these items, so if you want to track those down. If you feel like I missed out on some accessories that I should have included here, again, leave some comments down below. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time.